This is Julian from AWS. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos. In this video, I'm going to focus on deploying models with Amazon SageMaker. And using the whiteboard, I'm going to walk you through three scenarios. The first scenario is the usual one, deploying a single model on a real-time endpoint. The second scenario is deploying model variants, also called production variants, on the same endpoint. And this is useful if you want to gradually introduce a new model in production to check that it works correctly before deploying it 100%. And the third scenario is a recent capability called multi-model endpoints, where you can dynamically load and unload a large number of models on the same endpoint. So this is really useful if you have hundreds or thousands of models, maybe you have one model per customer, and of course you don't want to deploy, manage and pay for thousands of endpoints. So instead of doing that, you can use a multi-model endpoint and load and unload model automatically as they are required by incoming traffic, okay? So let's start with the first scenario, deploying a single model on an endpoint. So let's see how we usually deploy models. We start from a SageMaker estimator and we call the fit API to train a model. And once the model has been trained, we find a model artifact in S3. Okay, and the model artifact is going to be a gzip tar file called model.tar.jz. Okay, of course now we want to deploy. So we call the deploy API and this will do three things. The first one is to create the model. Okay, creating the model really means registering the model in SageMaker, um, defining a name for the model and associating it to the uh, S3 location. The second thing is to create an endpoint config. The endpoint config is actually a list of production variants, at least one. So in this case, let's stick to one. We'll see uh, what happens when we have multiple ones in the next example. A production variant is a model name, okay, corresponding to the name you, uh, you used when you created the model, an instance type, which will be used to create the managed infrastructure to serve traffic for the model, and an instance count. How many instances do you want uh, for that endpoint? Okay, And once we have the endpoint config, um, deploy will create the endpoint itself, so creating the managed infrastructure uh, serving uh, predictions using HTTPS. Okay, so let's say here we have a single production variant and we created three instances for that production variant. Each instance will host the model that we trained and the endpoint will automatically load balance traffic across the three instances that we define here. Okay, so that's the, the basic scenario. Train, deploy, and serve traffic using HTTPS using a single production variant. So deploy will do all of that. Now, if you want to do these individual operations, it's possible too. Uh, for example, you could use a model that has already been trained and, uh, and create a new endpoint config for it and deploy it. Okay, so these uh, lower level APIs, create model, create endpoint config, and create endpoint are available in the AWS SDK. So if you use Python, you'll find those APIs in Bodo 3, and if you use other languages, you'll find them in the language SDKs. Okay, so the, the SageMaker SDKs makes it a little easier, just called fit and deploy, and everything else happens. But keep in mind, you can do those things uh, on their own if that's useful. Okay, so that's the basic scenario. Now let's look at the second scenario where we deploy multiple model variants on the same endpoint. Now let's look at deploying multiple production variants. So we would start from several models that we already trained, okay, using either the SageMaker SDK or maybe the low-level uh, API. In this case, we'd use a create training job in, uh, in Bodo 3. And uh, let's say we have two models, okay? So maybe we have uh, last week's model and we have today's model and we want to see if today's model is performing the way it should, okay? Um, but you could train three, four, five models if you wanted. So anyway, we, here we have two, and once again, they'll be stored in S3. Nothing new here. Then we need to create both models, okay? And uh, we need to do this twice, of course, because we have two models, okay? 
Next, we create the endpoint config, and this is where things start to change, because here we are going to define two production variants. Okay, so production variant one for model one, with a certain instance count, instance type, and weight. Okay, I'll come back to weight in a second. And production variant two, with model two, instance count, instance type, and a weight. And of course, we do this only once, okay? Because we want to have a single endpoint at the end. So what are those weights? Well, those weights will dictate which fraction of traffic a certain production variant will receive, okay? So let me flip the board and show you. So now, when we're creating the endpoint, the production variants get created separately. So let's say production variant 1 is backed by three instances and production variant 2 is backed by one instance. Okay, And I assign different weights, of course, to the production variants because, again, maybe production variant 1 is the model that I already know and the production variant 2 is the new model that I trained and I want to see how it's doing in production. Okay. So production variant one will get a fraction of traffic represented by its weight divided by the sum of all weights. Okay, and accordingly, production variant two will get a fraction of traffic represented by its weight divided by the sum of weights. So let's say um, W1 is nine and W2 is one, okay? then production variant 1 will get 90% of traffic, 9 divided by 10, and production variant 2 will get 10% uh, of traffic, okay, 1 divided by 10. So this is how you would set up um, Canary deployment uh, and um, introduce a new model that you've trained and looking at its metrics and your, uh, your KPIs as well to see how well it's doing. And of course, you can update the endpoint configuration so you can change the weights, right? You could start with 90% and 10, and then 80, 20, and then 50, 50, etc. And uh, this can uh, be done without any disruption to, to the service. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So this is how you would use production variants um, to introduce different models on a live endpoint and potentially removing production variant one altogether, setting its weight to zero and just removing it from the endpoint configuration. Okay, so that's uh, multiple production variants. Finally, let me show you how to use multi-model endpoints that load and unload models dynamically as needed. First, of course, you would train all your different models. Okay, so business as usual, and you would have plenty of models in S3. OK, the next step, and this is really different from the previous ones, would be to create a single model uh, in multi-model mode. OK, so let's say all these are XJBoost models. OK, so you would create your model pointing at the XJBoost container, okay? the, the container that contains the, the code that will be used to serve prediction for the models you would define where in S3 under which prefix these models live. Okay, so whatever prefix hosts all the models is the root. And there's a parameter for the mode and you should absolutely use multimodal. Okay, this is what actually triggers the multimodal setup for this. Okay, so when you create the model remember you need to pass this parameter okay otherwise you're just creating um, a single model just like we've seen before okay next you create an endpoint configuration and an endpoint and there's no change here you use the exact same api exact same syntax okay so remember you're creating an endpoint configuration so let's say you're creating maybe a single production variant for this model, but this model is really multiple models, okay, served by the same container. Okay, so sometimes people are confused here. Yes, you create only one model, 
And most of the time, you know, you'll create only one endpoint configuration and one endpoint. Okay, and so when the endpoint is up, let's say you have a single production variant backed by three instances. Now, when you send traffic to this endpoint, you are not just sending input data, you are also sending the model name. Okay, so that's the trick. Uh, you send the name of the model in S3 that you want to use to predict this specific sample. Okay, so using the root and the name, we can find uh, which model to use for that input data. Now, if the model is not present on the endpoint, then um, the endpoint will, will load it dynamically from S3. Okay, that's the, the really cool feature here. Um, you can just go and fetch the model that you need in S3. Okay, uh, of course, the first hit is going to be slow because we need to fetch the model from S3, we need to load it. So, well, uh, the first prediction will be slow, but then the next ones will be fast, okay? Um, you also need to implement uh, a short list of APIs uh, to load, unload, list uh, available models, etc., etc. Okay, so you'll find the list in the documentation. Um, if you're using XJBoost or if you're using Scikit-learn, we actually provide sample code for this. So chances are you won't have much to write. If you have a custom container, something completely different, then you will have to implement those APIs so that SageMaker can invoke them to load, unload, list models, etc., etc. Okay, but these are really uh, pretty straightforward, I would say. Just look at our examples and, and you'll figure it out. Um, so that's the multi-model thing, okay? Uh, remember the big difference. We treat this collection of models in S3 as a single model. So this is why we create only one model from an API perspective, okay? We tell SageMaker what root prefix they live in. We want multi-model mode, then create endpoint configuration and endpoint just as we've done before. And when we predict, we need to send, of course, the input data we want to predict and the model name, okay? And then SageMaker will uh, automatically load and unload models as you, as you need them. Okay, pretty cool. That's it for multi-model. Okay, that's the end of this video on model deployment. I hope it was useful. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Happy to answer questions as well. Uh, I will share additional resources in the video description, notebooks, blog posts, etc. And I'll see you soon with more content. And until then, keep rocking. Thank you.